Welcome to Spidell's Federal Tax Minute. I'm your host, Katherine Zidane, and this week we're discussing solar tax incentives that were expanded under the Inflation Reduction Act. If you need more information on the provisions of this act, we have a two-hour webinar on February 15th that will cover new guidance from the IRS, and you can get registered at Spidell.com. Also, this podcast will go on hiatus during tax season and will restart on April 25th. During tax season, you'll be receiving the Tax Season Tribune, which is a short weekly newsletter that has lighter fare than our regular content. The Residential Energy Efficient Property Credit was renamed the Residential Clean Energy Credit by the Inflation Reduction Act of 2022, and it's also extended an additional 11 years. The credit is now available for property placed in service prior to January 1, 2035. The Residential Clean Energy Credit is often referred to as the Solar Energy Credit, although it also applies to qualified fuel cell property, small wind energy property, geothermal heat pump property, and biomass stove and water heater property. The Inflation Reduction Act also adds qualified battery storage technology expenditures to the list of expenditures eligible for the credit, applicable to expenditures made after December 31, 2022. The IRS issued a private letter ruling in 2018 allowing home batteries to qualify for the credit, but only if the battery was attached to solar energy property and was expected to draw its power from the solar energy property. In that case, the battery storage technology was deemed to be part of the solar energy property system. The Inflation Reduction Act removed this requirement, so battery storage no longer has to be connected to the solar electric property to qualify. The Inflation Reduction Act retroactively reinstates the full 30% credit for properties placed in service after 2021. Under pre-Act law, the amount of the credit was phased down to 26% for solar energy property placed in service in 2021 and 2022, and was scheduled to be further reduced to 22% if the property was placed in service in 2023. The Act limits the application of the 26% rate to properties that were placed in service in 2021. There is no relief for taxpayers who placed their solar property in service in 2021, so these taxpayers are still limited to claiming a 26% credit. But taxpayers will be able to claim a 30% credit on their 2022 return if the property was placed in service in 2022. The full 30% credit is available for eligible expenditures through the end of 2032. The credit is phased down to 26% in 2033 and then to 22% in 2034. When computing the credit, you can take into account labor and installation costs allocable to the on-site preparation, assembly, or original installation of the qualified solar electric property, and for piping or wiring to connect to the residents. But the credit cannot be claimed for financing costs, including interest and origination fees, extended warranty costs, or roof repairs and replacements. The credit also cannot be claimed for expenditures allocable to a swimming pool or hot tub. All expenditures qualifying for the residential clean energy credit are treated as made when the original installation of the property is completed. This is significant for taxpayers who are undertaking solar projects toward the end of a tax year, because if the project isn't completed before December 31st, then the taxpayer will have to wait another tax year to claim the credit, and they may also face a reduced credit. Except for fuel cell property, each type of property eligible for the residential clean energy credit can be claimed for property installed on any personal use residence, even if it's not the taxpayer's principal residence. Fuel cell property has to be installed on the taxpayer's principal residence. For all property, including fuel cell property, taxpayers can claim the credit even if they don't own the residence, so this means renters qualify. But landlords cannot claim this credit even for single-family homes. Landlords have to claim the Business Energy Investment Tax Credit under IRC Section 48. The residential clean energy credit is non-refundable, but unused credits can be carried over indefinitely and the credit can be claimed against AMT. That's all for this week. Have a productive tax season and look for the first episode of the second season of Spidell's Federal Tax Minute on April 25th.